everyone, and welcome to this episode. Today we're talking about chemical bonding and specifically the potential energy diagram that describes chemical bonding. Um, we are, sometimes they're called Morse potential energy diagrams. And if you're taking AP chemistry, you're very likely to see them uh, early and often. So, but first let's imagine I have a couple of protons and those are positively charged. And I have a couple of electrons, those are negatively charged. And if we get, they get close to, oh, <laughs> And if I push them close to each other, they attract each other because they're oppositely charged. And now this would represent one proton with one surrounding electron, and that would be an example of a hydrogen atom. And let's do the same for the other one. You can see that they attract each other because they're oppositely charged. Now, what if these hydrogen atoms want to get together to form a bond? You might know that to form a chemical bond, the atoms have to get close enough to each other. Now, if I were to take these and bring them close, you can see that they repel each other in some directions. Like if I were to try to put the two positives next to each other, they repel each other and they don't stick together. Likewise, if I take the two negative sides and put those together, they will repel each other as well. However, if I were to put one of them this way and one of them this way, you can get an attraction between this electron and the other nuclei that the bond is starting to form with. And second of all, if I bring this back around, I can actually get the second electron to connect and attract the other nuclei as well. You've probably heard that a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. And you might have wondered why. Why is it a pair of electrons? And why are they shared like this? Um, you might have lost sleep over this kind of thing. Well, it turns out that the protons in the nucleus are going to repel each other. They do not want to get too close to each other. In fact, if I try to push this close, they're going to naturally repel each other a little bit. And electrons, of course, don't want to get too, too close to each other as well. If I try to push those two, they're going to repel each other. But right here in the middle, they've reached some sort of happy little medium where the protons, yes, they repel each other and these repel each other, but they're also attracted. The protons are attracted to the electrons and the electrons are attracted to the protons and they find this little group, this organization that looks a lot like this. And this is why a chemical bond uh, involves a shared pair of electrons. You need a couple of shared pairs of electrons, uh, shared electrons to hold those nuclei close to each other. How close? Well, we have energy diagrams to show how close they're getting. And as you, we looked at the magnets, we kind of saw them kind of relax and settle into their bonding situation. And that's kind of what atoms do as well. Uh, imagine your two hydrogen atoms, they're far apart from each other and they're not interacting with each other at all. They're kind of in a high energy situation, kind of looking around, looking for love, and they start moving toward each other and they see each other and they start giving into the attraction that they have to each other. And as they do it, they settle into a lower energy place until they get to, on this diagram, sort of this minimum area. Uh, and that minimum represents the lowest energy they get to before things start getting a little uncomfortably uh, close. All right. The formation of a chemical bond releases energy. You might have heard somebody say energy is stored in chemical bonds. That's not entirely true because energy is actually released when bonds are formed like this one. And each type of bond has an energy diagram like this that shows, number one, how much energy is lost when those atoms get together and given off and the distance that they get to before they start getting a little too close to each other. And so that's what the diagram like this is trying to show. So you get a minimum and then after you get past the minimum, now the nuclei might start getting a little too close to each other and you have to put in a ton of energy to hold it there. And so the thing, the bond will naturally occur um, at a distance where the energy is a minimum and that energy is given off when they're formed. And now let's take a short time and look at four questions in the style of AP Chemistry questions that you might see in your AP Chemistry travels. Starting with this one, this is a multiple choice question, and it says, which of the following graphs correctly shows the relationship between potential energy and intranuclear separation for two hydrogen atoms? So again, we're back to the two hydrogen atoms who are forming a chemical bond, getting close enough to overlap their orbitals and their nuclei will be a certain distance away from each other. And this question we can start with, 
Um, we've already looked at the graph of the potential energy uh, diagram. And there's only one graph in here that really looks like that. And that is graph letter C. Um, this one doesn't work. This doesn't match the same shape. This kind of matches the shape, but there is no increase in energy as the uh, nuclei get close to each other. They basically just lower the energy until they get to that minimum. And so that is a first question. All right, let's take a look at one more multiple choice question. And we'll take a look at it. It says there's our potential energy diagram. Again, it looks like letter C from the previous example. The potential energy of a system of two atoms as a function of their intermolecular distance is shown in the diagram above. Which of the following is true regarding forces between the atoms when their internuclear distance is X? So right there. So take a moment, read the choices, pause the video if you'd like, and see if you can guess the correct answer to this question. And if you uh, chose A as your example, as your answer, then congratulations. The attractive and repulsive forces are balanced at that moment. When they form that chemical bond, they're, the electrons are attracting the nuclei, but the nuclei are, are repelling each other, but they're balanced and they'll hang out generally in that area. So good job on that. One more multiple choice question. Again, you see the same similar diagram and um, we have another one. This one actually has numbers on it down here and potential energy in kilojoules per mole over here. Which of the following can be inferred from the diagram above that shows the dependence of potential energy on the internuclear distance between two atoms? Take a moment, pause the video again, and see if you can make the correct choice out of the four choices there. And if you were able to pick letter B, the atoms form a bond with a bond length of about 75. So here's the distance in picometers. There to there, we're right about 75. And it would not be letter C because if we're at 25, the net force would be repulsive, sending it back a little way from each other. And it would not be attractive at 75 picometers because they're balanced. We've achieved the energy minimum. And so the only good answer there is B. And now I'd like to share with you an FRQ style question with two parts. And uh, in order to do the two parts, we need to do part A first, and then we'll look at the potential energy diagram down here. All right, it says, answer the following questions about N2 and N2H4. In the box below, draw the complete Lewis electron dot diagram for N2. Uh, let's do this practice wise. Take a moment and pause the video and see if you can draw the correct Lewis structure for nitrogen molecules. Okay, great. And if you figured out that nitrogen actually needs a triple bond, that's very important for the next question because you only have 10 electrons and you have to give both nitrogens an octet. So nitrogen molecules, the ones you're breathing right now in the air, uh, that makes up 78% of the air are triple bonded nitrogens. And so that's the Lewis structure for that. And now keep that in mind. It'll go off the screen here for a moment. Based on the Lewis electron dot diagram that you drew is the nitrogen molecule polar. Well, the polar, the nitrogen molecule is not polar because both ends are the same. We're forming bonds between two atoms that have the same electronegativity and so nonpolar. Now let's look at the potential energy diagram. And this shows the potential energy of the two nitrogen atoms versus the distance between their nuclei. And this is a very general diagram. We've got zero there, but that's the only number on this whole thing. So that's what they've given us. On the graph, indicate the distance that corresponds to the bond length of the N2 molecule by placing an X on the horizontal axis. So we've already said that the bond length is the distance from here to here. And so I'm gonna go up here and put an X on the horizontal axis there. That represents the internuclear distance. And again, you're just estimating on a graph. So I'm sure there's a little wiggle room if somebody puts it a little right or left, but you wanna kind of get it right at the minimum. All right, this is the tough part. On the graph, which shows the potential energy curve of two nitrogen atoms, carefully sketch a curve that corresponds to the potential energy of two oxygen atoms versus the distance between their nuclei. Now, if you've ever seen a question like this, 
Um, we won't pause the video. We'll just talk about it because it's tricky. A lot of people got this wrong because, you know, they're thinking about O2. And in order to get the correct uh, sketch on here, we actually have to know something about O2. And it's always good to draw the Lewis structure of molecules that you're considering. We've already drawn nitrogen up here with a triple bond. If we draw the Lewis structure for oxygen, we find out that it actually has a double bond. And again, that would be nonpolar. That double bond is significant. <clears throat> so here's the question. We're going to draw a curve. And the qu actually two questions. Two questions are, is the bottom part of the curve, the minimum, going to be right, right, left, or same spot as the nitrogen? And will that minimum be higher, same, or lower than the nitrogens? And we have to know two things about uh, double versus triple bonds. First of all, triple bonds in general are shorter in length than double bonds, which are shorter in length than triple bonds. The higher the bond order, the shorter the bond length because you've got more electrons pulling those nuclei closer. So I'm expecting the bond distance, the internuclear distance for oxygen to be longer. So that means that's going to be further to the right. Also, the more higher the bond order, the more energy is released. So singles release some energy, doubles release more, triples release more on average. So it's going to have a lesser minimum or a higher, um, it's going to give off less energy and it's going to be have a longer bond length. So I'm going to change colors here. And if I'm sketching this one, there's no one correct answer, but you do have to have the minimum being higher up than nitrogen and farther to the right than the nitrogen. Ah, and let's get that up on the screen there. So that's what our sketch would look like. You would get a point for having this higher and a point for having it farther to the right. So there are four AP style questions that deal with the Morse potential energy diagram. I hope you found them helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to send me in the comments or, or directly. And in the meantime, happy studying and have a great day.